morning. It's an honor and privilege to worship with you and worship our God with you today. Um, first announcements, a couple in the bulletin I'll point out. Uh, Pastor Mark's on vacation August 17th. Linda will leave worship next week on Sunday the 23rd. Uh, there is a prayer walk for Lakeview Schools that will begin at 6 p.m. on Sunday, next Sunday. The 23rd, and, uh, I've heard there are some uh, anti-God forces tr trying to uh, stop that, so participation in that would be important if you're available. On Tuesday the 25th, from 10.30 to noon, there will be a drive through milk products distribution at the Stoneboro Fairgrounds. So if you have any needs or know a family that's in need, it would be a great thing to point out to them. Monday the 31st is the Joshua Havens meal to be delivered. Uh, Patty, you're involved in that. You need any support? No, thanks. I signed up. Okay, great. We're, we've been very, uh, everybody's been very helpful. Produce. There's a, a, a paragraph in here about that. Um, please check that out. And remember to uh, drop some money in the food bank collection cans. Any other announcements anyone has? Anything on the youth group? Since you brought up Elaine, I talked. I actually ran into her son Marsden this past week, and was, uh, after conversation with him, I'd say pray for Marsden too as the caregiver. That's very important. I think we pray for our caregivers. And um, I have a couple things to start us off with, also. We heard a wonderful testimony this morning at the Union Church. Why is that important? Well, some of you who are on session met Angie, uh, who is the treasurer from that church, through session. And um, her father, Bill Geist, and maybe some of you have heard of Geist uh, excavating uh, over that way. Anyways, Bill um, had, a, I had a, they thought he had a heart attack. It wasn't a heart attack, but he had a severe, like his heart was operating at like 20%. Uh, they have an AGH and doing another procedure, he threw a clot, had a, a minor stroke from that. Um, they were going to put him on an external defibrillator and yada, 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 all this stuff. No idea when they were going to get him home and everything. Like I said, 20% heart, whatever they call it, the way it operated. And, um, and then Friday, all of a sudden, it went right back to normal. Nobody can explain it, except for Angie. And the rest of us, prayer. <laughs> and God created a miracle for that man and for all of us to witness how God still do, is active in this world and does amazing things, as I'm sure you know. So I'm preaching to the choir. That's a wonderful praise. Um, also, a gentleman, we don't often, we're far enough off the beaten path. We don't get people stopping by here looking for help for things very often. And uh, in the middle of this week, or maybe it was the first of the week, an older gentleman named Paul stopped by, and Paul was heading to uh, Montana. He was he came back this way hoping to live with his son. That didn't work out the way he had thought it would, so he was on his way back. But he had next to nothing, an old pickup truck, and uh, it had Montana plates on it, lo and behold. So I'm pretty sure he wasn't telling me a story this time. And so, uh, anyways, but he was working his way back, and he really just didn't have much of anything. So I was able to help him due to your generous uh, giving to the, uh, the pastor's discretionary fund that we occasionally get a few funds there. So I was able to help him out with that. 
um, and send him on his way. But we have prayer together. He is a believer. Um, so just keep Paul in your prayers wherever he is today. I hope he's safe and uh, has a roof over his head and, and something in his belly. So, all right. Anything else? Yeah, Ryan. I was over at Bill and Kathy Cress's on Friday. Oh, and cool. He, he's doing good. Uh, they, they told me to say hello to everyone for them. Okay. Anything else? Super. You guys have easy names to remember together. Caitlin from there just got married yesterday. So. All right. Anything else? Yes, last week we prayed for uh, a friend of mine, Roseanne, that she would be able to visit her sister in the hospital. Yes. She was able to visit, and uh, her sister was moved out of the ICU. Oh, praise God for that. Praise God for these miracles and healings. <laughs> Wonderful. Anything else? Okay. Well, with these things in mind, let us begin our worship then this morning. Thank you. If you're able, please stand and join me in a responsive call to worship on the screen. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in company with the congregation. Your word is full of honor and majesty. of your hands are faithful and just. All your precepts are trustworthy. The fear of the Lord is the communion of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. Let us give glory to God with music and voice. First hymn on the screen is My Jesus, I Love Thee. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O oh God, deliver us from sin as we make our confession. Remove the scales from our eyes, for we overlook neighbors in need. Cleanse us from selfishness, which keeps us from serving them. Purge us of vanity, since we expect them to be grateful. Help us not to brood over the seeming ingratitude of some we serve. Restore us by Christ's redeeming sacrifice, and purify our intentions. Make us fit for your service. of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ you are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives all of your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let us come before our God in prayer. Almighty and glorious Father, satisfy us with your love this morning as we live this day in joy and praise. God of all joy, fill our souls to overflowing with the fullness of your grace. Your Son Jesus triumphed over death and your victory is for us as well. You certainly give us power over sin and death so that we may reflect your glory as disciples of Jesus Christ. And Lord, this morning the testimony has been given of a man whose body has been delivered from all of these trials of the heart. For Bill, Lord, we give you praise. But more than that, we give you praise for your testimony, for the, the witness of a miracle in a man's life, for the light of Jesus Christ that shines in him and will shine on others. We just pray, Lord, that he is able and willing to share the good news and the glory that he's seen. So that your, that your witness, that your miracle is not for nothing. Lord, and for others, Lord, in our lives who, who are experiencing miracles of their own. Lord, for those like Cresses, as, as Bill is recovering again and, and holding his own, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you'll continue to keep his spirits up. We give you thanks, Lord, for the promise we see in young people as Clayton and Caitlin, Lord, as they begin to take the next step in their relationship with one another, Lord, and enter into this fabulous gift of marriage that you grant us, Lord Jesus. God, you are full of joy. So turn us again, Lord. Turn us also to those who are in need of our prayers this day. Allow your light to shine in our hearts so that we might be able to see who we need to be praying for. So that you can illumine our thoughts and burden our spirits with your love for all who sorrow today, for all who cry out in fear, for all who cry out in want, in pain, or in loneliness. As we bow our heads to you, God of tender mercy, we ask that you would uphold the health and the spirits of Linda, of Elaine, and others who struggle like Mary with the deterioration of the mind. For Linda and, and the need for strength for her, Lord. Lord, we pray for Marsden and all those who are caregivers of loved ones who struggle physically or emotionally or mentally. Oftentimes, Lord, we know that caregivers, caregivers, it's harder on them than it is the one being cared for. And so we pray for health, for strength, and for wisdom for him and others. Lord, hear the prayers for those who are on our hearts and minds as we turn our thoughts to others. We now exclaim our joy and our gratitude for the prayers that you've answered this past week and for the prayers that seem to still be unanswered. Lord, we pray for the relationships in our lives, whether it be a spouse or, or a child, a relationship with a, uh, a co-worker, Lord. Lord, if there is conflict, if there is division, we pray, Lord, for places where people can find common ground. even the most impossible of things in our minds right now, that our own, our own leaders would find some common ground when it comes to the areas of our life that we all struggle with, be it the COVID, racial issues, and other things that affect us all. Lord, we pray for, for some calmer heads, maybe, and for some coming together and people to put aside politics for a change take care of the people that they've been entrusted with. Lord, we give you thanks this day for hearing our prayers, for granting us the faith to expect your work in our lives to take place, 
for our place in the church of Jesus Christ. Lord, fulfilling Father, you have given us a magnified teacher in your Son, Jesus Christ. And so he taught his disciples to pray that prayer we call the Lord's Prayer. And today we offer it up to you again in a little different form, but certainly a reflection of that original prayer, as all prayers have been ever since. Lord, hear this. Hear us as we pray together the Lord's Prayer, as it's in our up on the screen. Eternal Spirit, source of all that is and ever shall be, loving parent in whom we discern heaven, May knowledge of your holiness inspire all peoples, and may your commonwealth of peace and freedom flourish on earth until all of humankind heeds your call to justice and compassion. May we find the bread that we need for today, and for the hurts we cause one another, may we be forgiven in the same measure that we forgive. In times of trial and temptation, help us to be strong, when life seems overwhelming, help us to endure, and thus from the yoke of sin deliver us. May you reign in the power of human love, now and forever. Amen. Since we're in a, that place of prayer, I, I just feel compelled to share with you a little experience I had this week. I met a family locally here in, in, in a neighborhood next door to us. I'll just leave it at that. And as I made my way to their front door through a tiny path through all of the stuff, let's, I'll try to be nice and stuff, very carefully made my way and knocked on the door. It was evident to me as a very, very, very poor family who maybe had just gotten used to their surroundings. As I stood back and, because let's face it, yeah, we all live pretty good, all of us here. You know, some of us make more than others, sure, some of us are on Social Security, but we're pretty confident we got heat. You have windows that close, so when it gets colder, the wind and the rain won't come in, right? That's not true of this house. Literally had garbage bags stapled to the windows and a blanket over a big picture window. A blanket! You know, and I just, I, I you know, you, you, words fail you, and you ask, like, how could people live like this? And yet they live like this all around us, don't they? And it's just, it's not until we're confronted with it that we even notice. Uh, maybe you're like me, I'll confess, maybe I'm the only one here, you know. I've driven by this place before, and I thought, nobody lives there. Nobody lives in that dump. They do. And it's their palace. It's not a dump to them, I guess. And I struggle with that. And I'll bet some of you do too, unless, unless you're a real saint. And it's easy to judge that, you know? And you just, but I learned about that family and I found out the needs there. And the aging of the couple that own the home, they actually own it. And then all the people that live there. Any more people and they'd have to hang them on pegs on the walls. Here, in western Pennsylvania, in this day and age, we're not talking about some, some place in Africa or something, you know? I mean, and you all know, those of you that work with Helping Hands, and just, you know this stuff, you know? But, so my heart aches for them, and, and I don't know what the Lord's going to do with that if it was just to bring the message to you to be praying for when you pass these homes, because there's more, that's not the only one around the area. And you don't have to get off the beaten path to see them. Just say a little prayer. And if you catch yourself being kind of judgy or like, like, ah, what a pigsty. Pray for the pigsty. And pray for maybe their neighbors to lend a hand instead of judging. Uh, wherever the Lord leads you. And wherever the Lord leads me this week, I have no idea. So, anyways. Forgive me for my rabbit trails. Um, the scripture lesson today, I guess we need to do that. Tempted and tried. 
John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5, and James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, and verses 12 through 15, and, and, and a few other things as well. Yes, indeed. Let me get there. All right. Let us pray for illumination in the reading and the proclamation of God's word. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I said I was going to start with John 15, but I'm actually going to, I lied to you, we're going to start with Matthew 6, 9 through 13, but I don't think you need to crack your Bible open, and you don't have to have it up on the screen, because I'm pretty sure you all know this one, if you don't have any other Bible verse verses memorized, I'll bet you got this one. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Well, that's the ESV version of saying the Lord's Prayer, right? Temptations. Today we're talking, and lead us not into temptation. We're nearing the end. Woo -hoo, we're almost there. If you're tired of the Lord's Prayer, I come back in three weeks from now and we'll maybe wrap it up. Maybe. I'm not promising that. But anyway, so temptations. Temptations and trials come all of our way. But rest assured that when we cry out to God for deliverance, He'll do something about it. He will lift us out of the muck and the mire and pull us out of that situation. Maybe not immediately. I know there's, you could probably tell your stories, but it comes. Every time we find ourselves giving into temptation and to sin, we do one of two things. We either cry out to the Lord or we put our blinders on and willfully go along with our desire. Evil is part of our world. It's a course of, it's just how it goes. I mean, the enemy himself, the devil, is real and a real part of our lives. But we ourselves can be our own worst enemy, can't we? Remember back when I was a kid, the old line, oh, it was the devil that made me do it. Right? Way, way back in like 19 and 70 somethings, right? Like years ago, before some of you all were born. Wow, I've come to that place in my life. Anyway, yeah, the devil made me do it. Well, you know what? We do a real good job of creating our own troubles, don't we? You don't need the devil to do it because we have this fallen nature thing that we're born with. Our flesh gives way to sin. Well, there's good news. There is good news. It, and it means that the good news today is that we have a means. We have a tool. We have a way out of temptation. We have a way to overcome our temptation to sin. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to warn us when we're tempted. To go, hey! Don't do that! Hey! Get your attention, right? I mean, I know people in my life that, that and friends and people around the area and past and stuff that, that just go through life, eat, drink, and be merry, and womanize, and all this other stuff. like, And it never occurs to them that that might not be a way to live. Because they don't got Jesus. So naturally it wouldn't occur to them. Unless they were taught some kind of morals maybe or something. But, but when Jesus is in your heart, when you got the power of the Holy Spirit, you get alerted. You get these little alert notices that you need to reset something in your life. It's kind of like, you know, when your car gets a recall. You know, the Holy Spirit gives you a little recall notice. So, our help in test and temptation, our Redeemer from sin, Jesus Christ, gives us the good news in this battle against the devil, against the world, and the flesh. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. Jesus talks about where this power comes from and who we need to be plugged into. Jesus says these words, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. 
Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Okay. Okay. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. you bet. If we but abide in Jesus Christ, if we lean on Jesus, if we reach out to him when we are tested or tempted, he will deliver us from evil whether it be evil of the devil, the world, or our own making. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm reading this Lord's Prayer, and it's... I got a question. I got a question. It, it's, you know, our Father in Heaven, it's all about Him, right? And what He can do for us when we cry out for help. And then it says, and lead us not into temptation. Wait a minute, Irk, put the brakes on. Does God lead us into temptation? Kind of sounds like that, right? Well, why would God lead us into temptation? It's kind of like he sets a trap for us, it sounds like to me. It's kind of like my cats that have, you know, my cats don't judge me. They're all declawed and they live in the house and they're fixed so that they don't destroy stuff. You know, that's just how we live with cats. They never see the outdoor world unless it's looking through a, a cage door on the way out to the car. That's their experience of outdoors. And matter of fact, the one cat one time accidentally got kicked out the door, and I swear, it ran back to the door and took its little paws and went, let me in! Right? <laughs> Scared to death of the outdoors. But those cats still, when a mouse gets in the house, will play with that mouse until the, do the, the, until the mouse dies from heart failure. Right? Because they don't have claws, and, and I don't think they really bite them, because they probably go, ew, yuck, you, I'm supposed to eat that? I don't think so. That's why they put that food in my dish all the time, the little slaves that walk around here on two legs, you know? So they just beat the, cat, the mouse around, it's like, great toy! Is God like, like that? He just toys with us and beats us around until we either survive or die? I mean, lead us not into temptation, as always, best solution, best answer to find our answers is turn to God's Word, to the Bible. Well, in the Bible, we read stories about Job. And if you know anything about Job, that story starts out with God and the devil place a wager, basically. They have a bet to see if Job is going to remain a godly, faithful man. Well, that hardly seems right. And then, and then there's, you know, Jesus was tested repeatedly through his life and his ministry. The disciples were tested. Remember that wonderful scene in the boat? And you can pick whichever one in the boat you want. Whether it's the whole Peter walking on the water, or Jesus is taking a snooze when there's a big storm and the boat's about to sink. Either way, the disciples are tested in those moments. Is God playing with them? In each case, they were tested, not tempted. Now, that's important to understand. There's a difference between being tested and tempted. Um, James has a little word about this for us. James chapter 1, we'll start with verse 2. And this is referring to the testing and temptations, right? He says these words. Count it all joy. Yay, I'm being tempted and tried. Yeah, not joy. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of, of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And then jump over to verse 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, 
For God cannot, hmm, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. This too is the word of the Lord. Yeah, that kind of straightens things out a little bit, doesn't it? If you take some time to like let that let that ruminate, as our dairy cows would do right now, are doing right now, right? Ruminate on that a little bit. Let it settle in. It turns out God does not tempt us, but He does test us. Think of it this way. This was a huge revelation to me when I went back to college and stuff, you know, in my 30s or whatever, when I started this whole journey, and that I, I wished I would have got when I was like in high school. But then again, in high school, I would have had to have been paying attention to get, I probably was told this somewhere along the line, but I didn't pay attention in those days. So as an adult, when I went to school, then I had, uh, I guess I had a horse in that race, so I started paying attention. And I heard this, an essay, an essay exam is an exam to find out what you know. Where you can just tell everything you know about a certain question or topic. And for me, in the way my brain works, I was like, I, I get to just write about it? If this isn't a trick question like multiple choice, you know, where there are like four answers, but two of them are real close. And you gotta pick the best of the two. I hate those things. They mess me up every time. Because I'm like, yeah, but, and I, and I get in these big arguments in my head, and if it's a, te a time test, I'm, I'm, but an essay, I like to write, and that's how I think. So, essay tests are to find out what all you know about something. When God tests you, it's very similar. He tests you to find out what's in your heart. Everything that's in your heart. Or isn't. Right? All right. It turns out God does not tempt us, but he does test us. Temptations are part of life. Temptation, if you're sucking air, you're going to get tempted by something. When tested, either we lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus and stay connected to the vine that breathes very, our very life into us, or we can cut ourselves off from the Lord and go through life with our blinders on to everything and do what we desire, we need to realize that God's not tempting us. God reveals our hearts, because that's what he wants, right? If our heart is connected to Jesus, we'll, we will either not give in to the temptation, or if we do, he will lift us up and pull us out of that stuff. If we keep crying out, because you know, like the old Gaither tune, tune says, right? There is something about that name. You don't have to have the magic, magic words. Just say Jesus from your heart and he'll rescue from that stuff and pull you out from it. When Jesus uses the comparison of our connection to him, like that of a vine and branch to bear fruit, he's saying we cannot stand alone. We can't be, you know, whether it's the trumpet vine over by the garage, or if you've got wisteria growing over your back porch, or you got a beautiful rose vine growing, or something like that, you know if you whack the thing off, what you whack off is going to die. Now, in the case of trumpet vines and wisteria, it'll come back. But, no matter what you do to it, but, but the stuff you cut off, it dies. Now, there are exceptions in, the, in our world. What, what's that stuff that grows down in Florida on the trees, that, the mossy stuff that like hangs off, off branches? Spanish moss. Do you know that they are not a parasite to the tree? They don't get their nourishment from the tree. They get it from the air. So they're the exception to the rule. They just use the tree as a support structure. So, so there are exceptions even in nature. But for the most part, when you cut something off from a plant, off of it, it dies. Like, these beautiful flowers are beautiful today. Come back tomorrow. Come back a week from now and look at them. They're going to be pretty dead. Sorry, plants. Don't tell them they're going to die tomorrow, okay? 
anyway. Goofy me. So, the evil in our hearts has names. The devil, 1 Peter 5, 8. The devil seeks to devour us, right? Like a lion. John 15, the world, the world hates those who love Jesus. And Paul, my favorite line from Paul, the, the, my favorite double talk from Romans, I want to do what's right, but my flesh won't let me. Or it even gets better, you know, he says, you know, I, I, I do the thing I don't want to do, even though I know I'm not supposed to do it, but I do it anyway, and that back and forth, back and forth, which I get in my screwy mind. I love that line, because it's so true. The evil in our lives, flesh, devil, world, they're all out to get us. God may test us to see how firm we, we are rooted in Jesus. But the temptation that reveals our weakness comes out, of, out by the attack of our enemies, devil, flesh, world. Temptation. It's an attempt by our enemies to undermine our loyalty and our love of Jesus Christ and all that he commands us. Yet if we abide in Jesus and he in us, we will survive the attacks and ace the test. Bottom line, as we read in scripture, the temptations, when given into, bring about sin. And what sin bring about? Death. Seriously. Spiritual death and real death, oftentimes physical death. Temptation. As James 1.17 says, trials are a gift. <sighs> okay, yeah, trials are a gift. But they are a good gift. Some of you are some of you are walking billboard. You're like me. You're a walking billboard for the old line. What doesn't kills doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh-huh. I should be like a power lifter. My goodness. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You know what scripture means when, when you when you read this line about that tests are a good thing. You know? Because they make our faith stronger, don't they? Heavy lifting makes you stronger. They make you stronger. They build your faith. And faith's not grown when life's easy. Right? You don't really, you don't grow in the faith when it's easy. No, you know, no pain, no gain, right? It is so true. No faith grows greater than when you step out not knowing what awaits you. And when it's difficult, when it's painful, when it's hard. Faith grows when tested. And you don't give in to the temptation and to the sin. Look at it this way. If God tests you and you pass the test, it means you've relied on God. And every time you rely on God, it gets a little easier. It gets a little more a part of who you are. And the provisions through it are the good gifts that James talks about. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. You know, it's not just about the temptation coming out the other side. Because with that strength comes the ability to do more, the ability to be a greater witness. You, you can be blessed in the midst of and on the other side of trials and tests too. And, and the good news is, even if you fail the test and give in to the temptation and the sin and just cry out, Jesus, or Jesus, save me, He will. He, he will. If today you are falling to the temptations and, and, the, and, and you're struggling to manage sin in your life, first of all, you shouldn't be managing the sin. Because that kind of means you're, you're giving into it, right? You have your little compartments. <laughs> Got that little secret thing going on over here that nobody knows about, right? None of the church people know about that. So as long as we keep that managed, right? But see, Jesus doesn't work that way. It's, he's like an all or none kind of dude, right? He wants all of your heart. Not just little compartments and little boxes from it. You need to be crying out to Jesus for that stuff. You know, we need to be like, like Jesus said to his disciples. Remember that night? That last night Jesus had with his disciples? Remember? When he said, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. And what's he say? The spirit indeed is willing. But what? Somebody said the flesh is weak. Yeah. We all know that. 
So humor me again this week, as I refer, refer yet again to another favorite hymn of the pastors, and, and it's a, a hymn that goes back older than me. I used to, I got hooked on this dude when, when I was a young fella and would go to my grandma, my grandma Stifler's house, that's my mom's mom, obviously. <laughs> Anyways, she loved, among other things, Lawrence Welk. Why is it when you, like, when you're little and you're made to watch things or are exposed to different kinds of music, you hate it when you're a kid and then when you get older, it's like you start seeking it out, especially with, like, the gift of Pandora and stuff, you can get anything you want, right? Like, if somebody would have told me when I was 15 that I would love Frank Sinatra, I'd have been like, oh, a curse on you, <laughs> you know? I mean, and so... True confession, and Rosina's going to love me for this. I love Tennessee Ernie Ford. <laughs> She's a big fan. I bet she just like swooned, right, back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Old Tennessee Ernie Ford. I love his singing, and I love his hymns when he does the hymns. And by the way, he's a funny guy. You should on, bring it up on YouTube and watch some of, some of his little bits he does. He's actually a pretty funny dude. But anyway, so there's this old hymn. And, and it's called, far, what is it called that you should have it there somewhere? Farther, farther what? Farther along. Do you know, up until about five years ago, I thought it said, Father Alone. And I couldn't make sense of the words. Because <laughs> you know how you hear songs and you debate over what, what are the lyrics, really, right? Well, it's farther along. Now, by the way... Sorry if you love Lawrence Welk and watch all the reruns of Lawrence Welk, but Lawrence Welk's right up there with watching NASCAR and watching golf. If I want to take a nap, put it on. Gone. <laughs> Sorry for NASCAR fan or golfer, it's just not my thing to watch. Anyways, so listen to these lyrics though. We're going to sing it here in a little bit, of course, but listen to the lyrics. And by the way, it's not just old Tennessee or any forward. I was looking. Like every single country artist that's ever been practically has re-recorded this right up to today, to the modern artist. Everybody loves this song. Because, you know, to be a country artist is to record a, a Christian album of some kind, or old hymns. You, that's the law, right? If, if you're in Nashville, you've got to do that, right? Okay. Oh. So check this out. Tempted and tried, we... We, we are oft, uh, often, right, made to wonder. Why? Why it should be that all day long, while others are living around us, they're never molested, though in the wrong. Right? We can relate to that. Why, what is it with that? Why is it when I try to do all the faithful stuff, trying to live life right and everything, and bad things happen to me? And I fall to certain things, and I give in to the whatever it is I'm being that I'm dealing with. And that dude over there, he can fall in a bucket of the stuff they keep in the barn and spread on the fields, and come out smelling like a rose every time. I'll bet you know people like that in your life. Careful, because there might be somebody looking at you that thinks you're one of those people. But by the way, you know. Don't wish for someone else's life, because you don't know what stuff's going on they're not showing anybody. And you probably wouldn't want it. You know? Sometimes I wonder, back to the, the hymn, sometimes I wonder why I must suffer. Go in the rain, the cold, and the snow, when there are many living in comfort, giving no heed to all I can do. Maybe you're that person sitting in the church pew every Sunday. And things at home aren't great, but by golly, you're here. Car breaks down all the time, you've barely got enough gas to put in the tank, but I'm here every Sunday. And then there's that guy over there. Other people. They always get brought up to the front of church. Everybody brags on them and raves about them. And I'm sitting here, and i got stuff I can offer. Nobody has ever asked me. That's kind of what that's talking about, right? Or maybe some other thing in life. Tempted and tried, how often we question why we must suffer year after year, being accused by those of our loved ones, even though we've walked in God's holy fear. Right? Well, and then here he gives an answer. Soon we will see. 
Soon we'll see, her, see our dear loving Savior. Hear the last trumpet sound in the sky. Then we will meet those gone on before us. Then we shall know and understand why. Farther along, we'll know more about it. Farther along, we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother. That's kind of what James is talking about. Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Now, there's a little theological disclaimer. I'm not so sure we'll understand it all in the end. I'm not so sure it's all that important. By the time we get to heaven, I don't think you're going to care about the stuff you care about today. Because we're going to be a different, different person. Something we are not today. So that's probably why this hymn is not in our hymn book. <laughs> but overall, it's a great hymn and it has a great message. Because we can relate to that experience, right? Why me, Lord? We know we're not supposed to ask that question, but we all do it at some point in life. Why do I have to struggle and be tested when that guy never seems to have a care in the world? Me. Why do I always have the lingering smell of cow manure on me? And it's not just because you work in a barn, right? Talking to a Dutchman the other day, cows are in the barn, it's feeding time, the whole barn is a racket. We can hardly hear, hear each other talk. And that's when I realized it's feeding time and they're complaining. And all of a sudden, cows, you know, they drink water. Guess what? Same thing happens to you, except for when it hits concrete, boom, right? What pastors ever talk about this stuff in church? Well, goofy me, right? I was smart enough, because I knew a thing or two, I started stepping back, <laughs> so I didn't get splashed. And then when I got home that night, Marla's like, what smells? <laughs> Oops, still got my shoes on. Anyway, so why is that? It's not just because you work in a barn that you still smell like it. I think, at least for me anyway, speaking my own experience, I think I still smell like it because God wants me to remember who I depend on. He wants me to be ever mindful and get that little tap on the shoulder, that little recall notice every now and then. Hey, hey, there's this little thing over here that you got going on? No, we need to be over here, all right? You need to step back, step back from the mess that's hitting the ground in front of you because it'll splash on you. You need to move. You need to do something different, change direction. Call out my son's name. Cheer up, my brothers and sisters. Live in the sunshine. Yeah. Live in the sunshine. That's good enough for me. I hope it is for you too. Let us pray. Lord, the, your, your word assures us that the flowers do fade. And the grass withers. And it's thrown into the fire. But the word of the Lord stands forever. May the words of your servant's mouth be a blessing to our hearing, to our hearts. And be a, a glory for the glory of God alone. Amen. Let's sing together, farther along. And forgive me if I like start to channel a little of my Tennessee Ernie Ford. No, I'm not shaving my mustache into one of those little pencil mustache. Ricky Skaggs and the Whites. Don't get no better than that. That's, that tells you I'm a, I'm a bluegrass geek right there. Yeah, I love my bluegrass. Well, my goodness. Uh, you know what? So as you go out through this week and you face your trials and temptations, now we got a little clarity on it. Now we got some tools to work with. Cry out to the Lord Jesus. Depend on Him. Go the way He leads you. You'll get stronger doing it. You'll get better at this. And so in the meantime, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon us all and give us all peace. Hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts. And we know, as we've heard the good news today, that we are a blessed people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. And we all say, Amen. Amen.